Hello children, this month on Brain Food we're learning all about weather and I'm going to teach you some new vocabulary words about weather that you can practice using with your friends. Ready, set, let's go. Our first word of the day is gustnado. A gustnado is a weak, short-lived whirlwind that forms along the edge of a severe thunderstorm. Gustnados are similar to tornadoes, but they don't last as long or do as much damage. Let's take a look at an example of a gustnado. Hey guys, it's me, Sky. This month, we're learning about how to prepare for a hurricane with Rosa Lalonde from Polk County Fire Rescue. So Rosa, what exactly is a hurricane? Well Sky, what a hurricane is, is very simply, it is a spiral shaped storm and it comes and is born over the ocean and it comes on to land. That hurricane, that storm can have a lot of wind and that wind can blow down trees and power lines but obviously there's also a lot of rain. And when rain comes down, what happens? The floods come up. So a hurricane has rain and wind. How can we be prepared when a forecaster or a weatherman tells us that a hurricane might happen? Well, there's several things that our families are gonna do, but what we need to do, Sky, what we need to help our families do is maybe bring in some of those outside toys that could blow away. So our balls, some chairs, some bikes, things like that are outside. We need to help our families bring in. And then we also need to get all our pets inside too. During a storm when it is raining and winds are blowing, what is the most important thing we should remember? Wow, when there's one thing we need to remember that's so, so important, and we need to help our families remember this too. Everything in you wants to kind of look out the window and peek and see what's going on, we want to stay away from windows. Remember we talked about the wind and blowing down trees? Well, if that wind blows a tree down, it hits the window and we're peering out the window, we could get hurt. So we need to stay away from the window, stay inside, don't go outside during the storm because it's windy and rainy. And we need to do what our families tell us to do. Where is the safest place to stay in the house when a hurricane happens? Well, it's easy because everybody's house is different. Some are big, some are small, different size rooms. Get in the middle of the house. You want as many walls between you and the outside. So in the very center of the house is probably the best place to go. We talked about gathering emergency supplies, but what kinds of supplies do kids need to pack? Well, the parents and our families are gonna be busy getting food and all that big stuff. So but we need to make sure we remember some really cool stuff that's gonna make us feel better during the storm if we're at our house or if we have to go to our grandparents' house or we have to go to a shelter. So I've gathered up a few things I'm gonna show you and then I'm gonna look around the room and we're gonna kinda of get some other things so we can help our families. The first thing is, well, we need to get some clothes that fit, maybe our comfy clothes that we really, really like a lot. So that's pretty important because it may be a couple days before we can do laundry, so we need to have some clothes. Also, I don't know about you, Sky, but I have a favorite blanket. This blanket makes me feel better. It's soft and cuddly, and I've hugged it forever and ever. So maybe our blanket, maybe you have a blanket too. Um, and don't tell anybody, okay? I have a favorite stuffed animal. Okay, this is mine, and I like this one. So we want to pack. Now, little guy here, he has his favorite bear, his firefighter bear. So that might be what he puts in his bag, and that's fine. That's okay, too. Some of the other stuff, well, we may not have electric, and we may not be able to play some of our games, so we need to bring some things that we can do quietly, maybe a coloring book, some coloring. And gosh, this would be a great time to read our books, okay? A good time to read our books, because that's quiet entertainment. Uh, let's see. I don't know about you, but I'm a little scared of the dark, so I'm gonna have a flashlight. Everybody in your family needs to have their own flashlight. We don't wanna have to share or fight over flashlights. We should all have our very own. And, because my mom taught me to, we always need to have our toothbrush. That's very, very important. No matter where we have to go, our toothbrush. And I might get hungry, and I know my family's packing a lot of stuff, but. Maybe I'm going to put some snacks in my bag, too. Just a few. Let's see. I'm going to look around my room. Hmm. I'm going to get some quiet toys, too. My fire truck, my dump truck, 
whatever little quiet toys that don't take batteries or electric. And last, we talked about the wind and the rain, so I think I better get my jacket, okay? So this is the jacket that I would probably have them pack in their bag. So that's just some of the things that's important to put in a bag that we can carry, not one that we ask our parents to carry, one that we're strong enough to carry. That's great advice, Rosa. Thank you so much for teaching me how to prepare in case of a hurricane. I'm going to go pack my bag right now and store it in a safe place. Great, Sky. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Our first term of the day was gust nato. A gust nato is a weak, short-lived whirlwind that forms along the edge of a severe thunderstorm. In other words, you can think of a gust nato as a small version of a tornado. The word gust nato is actually a shortened version of the phrase gust front tornado. Here are some more examples of what a gust nato looks like. Where's that at? The game show quiz that takes you around the world. Let's do this. Question number one. This country is made up of a bunch of islands just below China in between the South China Sea and the Philippine Sea. This country is known for its coastline, which is some of the most beautiful in Southeast Asia. Unfortunately, they are also known for cyclones. Cyclones are another name for hurricanes, and this country sees a lot of them. They rank in the top three of the most prone to be hit by a hurricane. This country is also known for its capital city, Manila, which sits along the coast and highlights the local culture. Is it A, Syria, B, Kenya, or C, Philippines? That's right, it's C, the Philippines. The Philippines have a beautiful coastline and many people love to visit their beautiful coves, lagoons, and crystal clear water beaches. Unfortunately, because of their positioning in the surrounding ocean, they average about 20 cyclones a year, five of which get strong enough to cause significant damage. Okay, are you ready to do question number two? This country also ranks in the top three countries most likely to experience a hurricane. It also sits in the Pacific Ocean just above the Philippine Sea. This country, like the Philippines, is made up of many islands. It is very well known for its many electronic inventions and products and continues to be a world leader in making robots. I want to be your robot. In history, it is very well known for its attack on the United States at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii during World War II. Is it A, Japan, B, Peru, or C, Madagascar? It's A, Japan! Many of the electronics we use today are made by Japanese companies like Sony, Toshiba, Sharp, and of course, Nintendo. Because Japan sits out into the ocean, it is often the first point of contact for cyclones and typhoons making their way towards Asia. While some of the islands of Japan, like Okinawa, experience a lot of storm activity through the year, the mainland of Japan actually experiences far fewer. Now you know a little bit about the two Asian countries, the Philippines and Japan. Well, that's all for this episode of Where's That At? I'll see you next time. Are you ready for your next vocabulary word? Our second term of the day is supercell. A 
supercell is a severe type of thunderstorm. They are the least common type of thunderstorm and they have the most potential to cause major damage. Supercells are typically found in places with a dry climate. Here is an example of what a supercell looks like. Welcome to Storytime. The book for this episode is Stormy Situations. Max was a very grumpy cloud. He didn't particularly enjoy spending all day in the sky and envied the plants and animals and people who lived on the land. As a result of Max's general dissatisfaction with his situation, Max was a bully. There were days, especially in the summer, when he was hot and uncomfortable, that Max would wait for the sun or the moon to go behind the horizon, behind a cloud, or be hidden by some other higher and older clouds, and Max would begin to pick on the smaller, lower clouds. These poor little clouds would be drifting by quietly, minding their own business, when Max would start to call them names or push and shove them. Some days, Max's name-calling would result in the smaller clouds crying. As a result, rain would fall. Eventually, the sun or the moon would hear the people on the land complaining about the rain and stop Max from bullying the younger clouds. Seeing Max getting into trouble for calling them names would cheer up the little clouds considerably, and their tears would soon dry and the rain would stop. Even worse were the days when Max would pick on the younger clouds in front of the clouds his own age. On days like these, the older clouds would circle the young ones in an attempt to protect them from Max's bullying. The end result was a lot of anger and discontent in the form of thunder and lightning. The sun and the moon were always hopeful that the clouds would be able to work these problems out for themselves. But in the end, either the sun or the moon would have to step in and quiet things down, breaking up the storm of emotions and hurt feelings. Now, there are many lessons to be learned from this story, such as, stop and think before you say or do something hurtful. Everyone is different, not better or worse, just different. Be calm when dealing with a bully. Anger and hurt feelings often produce more anger and more hurt feelings. Stay near adults and other kids. Most bullying happens when adults aren't around. Well, I hope you enjoyed our story and thank you for watching Story. Hey kids, it's me, Dion, and I'm here to get you powered up. Now, just because it's hurricane season and we might be having some rain outside right now, doesn't mean that you shouldn't get active and get off of the couch. So today, I'm showing you some exercises that you can do to get active right there in the house. The first one is one of my favorites and you've probably done it before. All you need is some paper and a trash can. It can be a big trash can, it can be a little trash can, whatever you have in your house is perfect. Now ask your mom and dad before you do this because you're gonna be throwing something in the house and you don't wanna break something. So, I've got my paper. What you're gonna do is crumble it up into a paper ball and you're gonna shoot it into that trash can. I'm no NBA star, but I'm gonna try my luck anyways. Get three of these. Go as far away as you can, because you want a challenge. You can start off, try to toss it in. Oh, I missed. I missed again. Or you can slam dunk. Oh.
well practiced. We're gonna move to the next one now. We made these called get up and move ducks. All we did was put some exercises on one box and some numbers on another one. So what do you do? You roll this one to find out how many you're doing and then you roll this one to find out what you're doing. It's a ton of fun. Ready? 14. Arm circles. That's easy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Let's do another one. Twelve. Heel kicks. A heel kick is where you kick your heels up in the air just like it sounds. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's do one more. Now you can do any exercises on these cubes, so if you don't like these ones, just pick another one. We got ten jumping jacks, my favorite. Ready? Do them with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's enough of the dice, but make your own at home, and you can do this all day long. Another fun thing you can do is go on YouTube and look up dance routines or fun dance videos and follow along right there in your living room or your bedroom or anywhere. Those are just three really fun ways to get active indoors while it's raining outside, but there's plenty of other ones and you can even come up with your own. Just remember to stay safe while you're being creative. Thanks for tuning in guys. Remember to stay active and power up. I'll see you next time. Our second weather term of the day was supercell. A supercell is an extremely severe type of thunderstorm that is unusually large. Supercells produce large tornadoes and hail. You can recognize a supercell by looking at the shape of it in the sky. Because they are formed by strong rotating winds, the clouds take on the appearance of a flying saucer. Here are some more examples of supercells. Hey guys, it's me, Bo. Thanks for joining me for Simple Snacks. Today's snack is a beach parfait. These delicious treats are fun and easy to make, and they taste great too. You'll need two cups of cold milk, one box of vanilla pudding, one and a half cups of crushed graham crackers, some cracker bears, and some candy for decorations. I'm using fruit by the foot and Lifesaver gummies. First, let's make the pudding for our parfait. In a large bowl, combine the two cups of cold milk with a pack of vanilla pudding. Then take a whisk and whisk the pudding for about two minutes. Make sure you whisk it well enough. You shouldn't see any clumps of pudding powder in your pudding. After it is mixed, set it aside and let it sit for about three to four minutes. While your pudding is setting up, we can start to crush our graham crackers. Put your crackers into a resealable bag. Depending on the size of the bag, you may only want to put a few crackers in at a time, then dump it out and put more crackers in. Crush the crackers as small as you can until it almost looks like sand. Dump 
Dump the cracker sand into a bowl or cup where it will be easy to scoop it out with a spoon. Now take your pudding, which is all set up, and scoop some into the bottom of your cup. Then add a layer of the cracker sand. Then add another layer of your pudding and a layer of cracker sand on top. Your parfait is done. Now it's time to make it fun and decorate. You can use a little umbrella to your beach or a frisbee using Skittles or M&Ms. Put your bear cracker in, in there and have him sit in an inner tube using a lifesaver gummy or sit back and relax on a rainbow sour belt. You can really have a lot of fun decorating your beach scene with different candies. And these are so good too. I love the vanilla pudding. Thanks for watching Simple Snacks. I'm Bo and I'll see you again soon. Hi guys, and thanks for bouncing into the Polk County History Center today. I'm Jamie, the Curator of Education and Programming, and this is Hank, my favorite tourist. Hank and I were actually just going over the History and Heritage Trail to Polk County to see all the awesome places you can go and visit. Did you know people have been visiting Polk County since the early 1900s? Do you think they knew it, Hank? No? Well then you've got a lot to learn. In the early 1900s, about 1919, a group called Tin Can Tourists started to become popular in the United States. These were people who went on road trips, and when they were driving, they brought their own tents with them, their own canteens, silverware, food, um, anything that you would need to live while you were on the road. And they got the name Tin Can Tourists because of the canned food that they brought with them. People who visited Polk County were oftentimes interested in a lot of the outdoor activities. We had really pleasant weather, which Florida still enjoys today. One of those biggest outdoor activities, baseball. Um, in 1933, the Detroit Tigers relocated their spring training from Texas to Lakeland, Florida. This offered an opportunity for tourists and residents alike to come to games and see greats like Hank Greenberg, Al Kaline, and Willie Horton knock it out of the park. In the 1960s, the Detroit Tigers brought their affiliate team, um, the Lakeland Flying Tigers now, to Lakeland as well. Um, the Lakeland Flying Tigers still today play with the Florida State League. In fact, they were league champions in 2012. So Polk County was truly a sportsman's paradise. Not only could you play baseball, but there were plenty of other outdoor activities, including golf, even swimming at municipal pools, and in one of Polk County's many lakes. This is actually a men's swimsuit uh, on loan to us from the Lakeland Yacht Club. Polk County also became famed for its lawn bowling, but also shuffleboard. Shuffleboard is still a sport enjoyed by many people in Florida and Polk County today. Another popular tourist attraction was Cypress Gardens. Opened in 1936, tourists flocked to Polk County because of the garden's lush flowering exhibits. So much so that in 1940, when there was a freeze, the garden kind of panicked and said, what are we going to do? Nobody's going to come see frozen dead flowers. What they did is they introduced their southern bells. Their southern bells walked around the gardens in these big princess poofy dresses. And anywhere where the gardens were not so pretty, that's where they stood with their dresses covering. 
Uh, they also had a water ski show. The water ski show was also not original to the park. It originated when a group of sailors and soldiers training for World War II came all the way over to Winter Haven and told Mrs. Pope, who was running the gardens, we're here for the, gar for the water ski show. Quickly, she got together some people who knew how to water ski, and from that, the afternoon water ski show was born. Now, some of you might say that sounds kind of familiar to an existing theme park in Polk County, and you're right. Cypress Gardens is now Legoland, um, and you can still go to Legoland and see a water ski show, and if you're very careful and on the lookout, you'll see a Southern Belle constructed all of Lego standing in the gardens to greet you. The Polk Theater not only hosted movies, but also live performances. In fact, some of you might be familiar with a man named Elvis Presley. He came through Lakeland in 1956 and performed two sold out shows at the Polk Theater. You can go to the Polk Theater still today and get your picture taken under its beautiful marquee or take in a movie or a live show. Among the most recognizable tourist attractions in Polk County is likely Bach Tower. Opened on February 1st, 1929, Bach Tower was the idea of Edward Bach, who was the editor for the Ladies' Home Journal. He wanted to incorporate a beautiful tower for a carillon, and a carillon is a special instrument where you uh, use kind of what looks like a piano to play bells. But Edward Bach also wanted a garden to surround his tower, so he hired Frederick Law Olmsted Jr. to design a beautiful garden that would encourage native Florida wildlife to migrate to the area um, and really leave something beautiful for the citizens and for the tourists of Polk County. Now, what's really interesting about Bach Tower is it opened during a time where the United States was going through the Great Depression. And rather than canceling the project, which actually happened to a couple other projects in Polk County, Edward Bach finance this project to its completion. So important was it that President Calvin Coolidge was here on the day that the tower was dedicated. He actually, if you're looking very carefully and walk around in the gardens, he planted one of the palm trees that's still standing in the gardens today and they have a little plaque on it. Unfortunately, not all of the roadside attractions that brought people to Polk County are still open today. However, their memories are kept alive here at the History Center. For example, one of the attractions, Sand Mountain, out in Fort Meade, featured literally a pile of dirt. Um, it was refuse from the phosphate mines where they would dig and then move the pile. It was opened in 1948 as literally a skiing mountain. Uh, people could pay a certain fee and they would ascend to the top and ski down or sled or whatever those fun snowy things people got to do in other places besides Florida. Um, as the phosphate process improved and improved, they actually found that they could go back in through that pile and get more phosphate. So in 1964, Sand Mountain closed to the public. But if you're very keen, you can go on YouTube actually and find some old videos of people skiing, Florida skiing, down Sand Mountain. The Chalet Suzanne in Lake Wales was a hotel and a restaurant. Um, and it probably became most famous because it had its own landing field. The Chalet Suzanne was recognizable because of its pink building, but also anyone who had the opportunity to visit before its closing in 2014 remarked on its menus that were handwritten on glass tiles. I hope you've enjoyed this walk through memory lane, and I encourage you to stop by the History Center and pick up a History and Heritage Guide to Polk County and see all the places that you can explore still in Polk County today. We we'll look forward to seeing you. Bye.